hello to the uh, test automation setup for our sandbox. And uh, we have in the previous video, we have installed uh, DevPops. So you can see it by the special toolbar here. That's the DevPops toolbar. Uh, watch the previous video if you haven't. And there's a test automation check utility in DevPops, which is a good way to check out DevPops and test automation. So it checks for system preferences first, demonstrates how to do that from your browser, basically. Um, it complains about the UPT end-to-end -end event list, which is not relevant, so we can skip that. And then it tells us, okay, if there's any UPT process, you have must stop it. And it looks for server parameters now as a second step. And it tells us there is a parameter missing or wrong value for the automation subsys, the name the subsystem. So it must be set to localhost, HTTP localhost with the correct port number slash Siebel slash JBS. And that we can click OK. So the wizard allows us to enter a valid port number because the server name will always be localhost in that case. And we just make double sure we have the correct port number, we need the internal Tomcat HTTP port number. We can look it up in the server XML file under the HTTP connector. Notice HTTP, not HTTPS. So 9012 it is. And it, the script goes ahead and actually changes the parameter. So DevPops demonstrates that you can interact with your server from browser script and using some clever business services. So check out the DevPops documentation. So the parameter has been successfully changed. So now it looks up the servers and object managers. I'm picking the English call center object manager on server 01, and it will check for parameters on this component. And for test automation, we need the enable automation parameter set to true and set to false. So with a click on OK, it takes care of that. And of course, you can do all of this manually. It's just we have DevPops and we have that test automation setup wizard in DevPops. So why not use it against our sandbox? So action sets are fine in this database and runtime events. So it has checked on those. There's a KWD action set. And the test script import workflow is not active. Must be done manually. The script cannot do this. And it found DISA, but it tells us, okay, you should check your settings and you should check your browser drivers. So all these to-do steps are, when you click on show to-do, they are listed here. So we can ignore the system preference and the UPT process. We have to restart the Siebel server after we finish setting it up. And now let's take care of that workflow first. So we can go to Web Tools and we can create a new workspace. So let's call this test auto01. And once the workspace is created, we close the workspace dashboard. And we can find the workflow we want to activate. So in standard Siebel, uh, since 20.7, almost all the workflows, standard workflows are inactive in a new installation like this one. And you activate them in the modern Siebel by just well, unchecking the inactive flag in the repository. Let's just requery, make sure it's active. And you deliver that change. So that's how workflow, it's much like an applet or business component. If it's not active in the design repository, it's not delivered. So by activating it in the design repository and delivering, which we do now, by of course, the usual bits, versioning, submit, and deliver. 
the workflow will be active in that database. It's a development environment, so we don't have to migrate it anywhere or deploy it anywhere. So that will take a while. And in the meantime, let's check out the other steps that the wizard told us to do. So the first, the next step is to go to the DSI installation folder, find the plugins for, there's only one, Siebel Test Automation, and edit that unitconfig.xml file to have the correct username, which is kind of a default being displayed, and the default URL should also be correct. Let's use our call center, valid call center application URL. We copy from the browser and let's replace that value here. Uh, Satmin is fine for our purposes and desktop Chrome is also fine. So these changes we save. And finally, we need to get a browser driver. So DISA will run Selenium and Selenium uses a browser driver. So looking for the Chrome version first, because we are going to use Google Chrome. So the version is 101 currently at the time of this recording. It checks for updates, obviously. There's some error. Let's not care about this error. Version 101 it is. So if we Google for Chrome driver, we find a page where we can download the Chrome driver for that version of Chrome. 101, download the Windows package. And that's a zip file. So when you open that zip file, you find the Chrome driver, exe. And that has to go into the DISA desktop in Siebel Agent plugins, Siebel Test Automation Drivers folder. So make sure you copy that or extract that Chrome driver XE here. So that's taken care of. And in the meantime, the delivery has finished for the workflow. So apparently only thing left to do is restart the Siebel server. So make sure we log out of every session. And then we use the Windows services, find the Siebel server and stop it. Now, stopping Siebel server takes a while and we want to monitor it. And once it's stopped, you start it. And again, you use task manager or similar to monitor the startup until the machine has cooled down again. And once the server is up, we're ready to test. So our server is up now. I've already am at the login page for Siebel call center. And let's log in just first and let's verify some of the settings for test automation. So first you need UPT enabled. That's a thing the DevPops wizard checks for. So if you go to system preferences through the sitemap and you query for all the system preferences with UPT upper, uppercase in the name, you should find enable UPT and enable UPT context to true. So that's the requirement for test automation. It's already set, so this is good. And let's find the runtime events. If you go to the events list, look for all events that use the action set KWD, which is a seeded predefined action set and predefined events. So if you find these events, that's good. And the action set must be active, which is which it is, so it's perfect. And it uses the usage pattern service, so it triggers UPT uh, usage pattern tracking. So with that in place, we can uh, start a recording. So we see the recorder and let's click start. And let's really put it, put test automation to the test. So 
we go to a little simple navigation, go to accounts, my accounts. Let's create a new account record. Just doing something, adding adding a dollar at the end of an, any string will result in a unique string. So that's good for the account name here. Uh, go back to the home page once you save that and stop the recording. Just really a few steps and then click the generate button in that menu and it should come back with one or more scripts generated and those scripts are now visible when you click the last button, the scripts button, you get a scripts panel. So here's the script you have just recorded and you should be able to click play, that should trigger DISA. And DISA displays the correct URL and username, you need to enter the password. Once you click OK, you can yeah, take your hands off the mouse and keyboard and watch in awe how the DISA Selenium browser driver Chrome combination replays the recorded script. So it's already locked in. So if if you're here, you basically you can declare success because the, the the whole combination of tools is working now. Let's let's of course check out if our script is replayed properly. So it should create a name with a unique timestamp. Replacing the dollar we entered. It yeah, has done that. And it has saved it and should go back to the home page, which is a good practice, and then logs out of the session. And DSA generates a report in HTML, and recently also in a modern HTML format, that's a 22.4 and higher. So you have a more, well, a, a, a different <laughs> formatting uh, aside. You have a JSON file, I'm not showing that here, but 22.4 introduces some interesting reporting. So final step really is to click import and that should run the import workflow. Remember we activated that and that moves the script into the Siebel database as a real test script, which you can later modify, add to test sets and test suites. And you find that in the test scripts view in the release screen, you find that imported test script with all the steps you recorded ready for modification. Okay, well done. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.